Good evening. Just thought I'd pop in on my way back from the airport. It's uh, Thursday evening. Um, wasn't planning to come down tonight actually, but uh, I thought as I was passing, I'd, I'd drop in because it's, it's gone home time. Um, not done an update for a few days. You saw the chaos of the bottling day. Uh, I'll talk more about that in a minute, but just wanted to give you a quick uh, look around at some of the little changes that we've made. Well, not really changes, just um, getting a bit more organized. So we had a big uh, packaging collection day last weekend. We headed around all the pubs that had had beer from us um, and got everything collected. So we've got plenty of casks and kegs now to last us. Oof, uh, certainly the next few brews. I mean, the right hand side is mostly kegs. Um, and we're much slower at using those. On the left-hand side are all of the, uh, all of the um, nine-gallon casks, the firkins, as they're referred to. Um, we've got a botch, a botch? <laughs> well, again, we'll talk about that in a minute. We've got a botch of Most and Dragon, um, which now I've cleared a little bit of room in the conditioning rooms. Um, the other evening, we can get those in. Temperature in here is fine at the moment for them, not causing any problems at all. And currently in the tanks, we have um, in tank one, we've got a Murgy straight. And in tank two, we've got another stout, the new improved stout with, um, with head. Uh, we've added some wheat, a bit more caramel to that to uh, hopefully give it the foam stability in the glass that was slightly lacking. The flavor was fine, everybody liked it, but it just needed a little bit more foam. This tank is what I want to talk to you about. It was, a nightmare. Batch, uh, let's put you back there. Batch 26, Murgy Strait. This one will live long in my memory. It was a seriously frustrating brew uh, for many reasons. You'll remember it. It was the double we did into, um, into the big tank. So on brew day, everything went, it was a long day, right? But everything went to plan. The challenge that we had was once we pitched the east, we turned on the glycol circuit and it poured out of the back. Um, the pipe had split, not into the beer, fortunately. The, the vessel itself is, uh, the integrity of that is fine. It was, the cooling coil is wound around the tank, had burst. And we couldn't get in because it had literally a ton of beer in there. Um, so yeast was in, it was too late and the temperature started to rise. So before we got too hot, um, we hastily, or I hastily constructed um, a stainless steel loop um, which we suspended in the top of the tank in order that we could put glycol, cold glycol through that to keep the temperature of the beer under control or the work under control. And it worked. Um, the challenge was at the end of the fermentation, we needed to crash the tank down. And the reason that we do that is to drop all of the, uh, the, the hops that we've put in, any yeast in suspension. When we drop the temperature down, it drops it all to the bottom. Um, and then we've got nice clear beer at the top. So if we're careful when we're racking out, um, we can leave the yeast behind. It's cold, it's stuck to the bottom of the, of the tank, basically. Um, when we first crack the tap open, there's obviously a plug of yeast in the tap. Let me show you. There's a plug of yeast in the, in the pipe underneath. And as the bottom of these are kind of dished, I don't know if that comes across on the photo, but as these are as these are dished, the yeast will naturally settle into the center. Um, so we let that plug of yeast out, dispose of it. Um, and then we're good then to rack into casks. As long as we keep it going, the yeast doesn't come back into the hole and it'll continue to flow. But if you, if you stop racking for any period of time, the, the weight of the yeast, it's gonna, it's gonna close in and drop into the hole again. And that's exactly what happened when we were racking the bottles. Rather than filling six casks, one after the other, and then bottling immediately, all of them, we filled a cask, brought it over, filled the bottles, took it back, filled it. And each time we refilled it, we got a little bit more yeast in. So we do need yeast in the bottles for the secondary fermentation. It, it's necessary, um, but we got a little bit more than I was really hoping for. Fortunately, it doesn't impact the, the beer one bit. Um, I've got some at home, which have settled out, uh, it pours lovely and clear. I'm really happy with the beer. Um, but, you know, for the first run to have a bit too much sediment, um, I've thought long and hard about it, but we're going to let it go out. I just wanted to tell you guys so that you know when they arrive, if you order some from us, if when they arrive, just let them stand, put them upright in the fridge. It'll drop out. Mine have dropped out lovely and clear. 
Oh, before I go, I've got to show you this. I got one of those impossible to find Raspberry Pis. Um, obviously, I've only got two sensors going at the moment. One in tank one, one in tank two. Uh, tank one's reading a little bit low. I have to adjust that. It's not that low. Um, but yeah, we can see fermentation progress. Both done. We'll get those racked this weekend. Right, see you back at the house. So here we are back at home. Um, let me show you these bottles. Uh, as you can see, there's a couple of labels on these two. These are just my personally printed ones uh, based on the proof from the printer, um, just to make sure they fit and look okay. I'm really happy with them actually. Um, the actual printed labels will be coming shortly, next few days, all the boxes have arrived as well. So let's take a look at these bottles and I'll show you what I mean about the sediment. So this is just settled at room temperature for a few days. Not a lot at all. This one, um, also settled a few days, you'll see there's a slightly more, slightly deeper sediment layer. And this one, and this one, I gave it a good shake last night and then put it in the fridge. So first one, this is the one that's just um, settled at ambient room temperature. Let's crack it open. Nice and clear. And the one that I shook up last night, this one, I'll, just, I'll give you another quick look before we do it. little bit more haze. A little bit more foam. Oh, it tastes good though. Lunchtime drinking. So, a frustrating brew. Um, I was telling you last night about the cold crash. I didn't quite finish what I was trying to say there. Um, if we can get it down to four degrees, then the yeast really compacts at the bottom of the fermenter and we pull a lot less through into the product. Um, clears quicker um, and, um, you know, it serves a little bit brighter. This, which is set, just settled in the bottle for a few days, at ambient room temperature. It's as clear as any pub serve that I've seen of Murgy Strait. It's nice, it's crystal clear, I'm very happy with it. Tastes great. This one is a little bit more hazy. Um, I don't mind that. I mean, it's not, it's, it's translucent, you can see through it. It tastes exactly the same as this one. Really no difference. Uh, I'd gladly drink either of these in a pub, no problem at all. I'd sit and suck that all night. Um, but because we didn't quite get to that 4%, uh, four degrees, I'm sorry, um, you know, there, there's, there's an impact and the impact is there's a little bit more sedimentation in the bottle than I would have liked. You've seen how much, it's not big, but once they've been rocking around in a van or shaken up during delivery, um, it is going to take a day in the fridge to, uh, to drop clear. And then when you're pouring it, just leave the sediment in the bottom or just chuck it in. I mean, some people like that. Um, not my thing, but if you don't mind, you can swirl it in at the end 
or, or leave it in the bottle, entirely up to you. I, I had, until I tasted it, I thought I was tipping them, the, all of them. Um, you know, the way that it went into the bottles as, the, as that filling run, as you saw in the video, as that filling run went by, I was getting more and more, you know, disturbed that we might have uh, wasted a chunk of money. But um, I think the beer speaks for itself. It's lovely. Um, they are available to buy right now on the web store. Um, I put it up the other day with without much notice. Uh, we took 15 orders in about a day. Um, thank you a lot to the people that spotted that little Facebook note and, uh, and acted. Um, we've got the cardboard boxes. The labels will be here in a day or so. We'll pack them up and get them out to you. Um, just please let them rest. Um, you know, next time we do it, we know what we've done. We know how we can, we can make it better next time. There won't be as much sediment in the bottles as, uh, as this time around. Maybe I'm just overthinking it. I mean, it's not really not a lot. It's maybe four millimeters. Um, it does not detract from the beer. Um, I just hope that everybody that buys it, you know, lets them rest. Um, if you're going to swig it out of the bottle, you probably won't notice the taste, but you'll definitely notice the colour if you pour it into a glass. So a day in the fridge uh, or a couple of days at ambient um, and you'll get something like that. I hope you enjoy it. Fourpriests.co.uk, click on the shop link at the top. Um, we're selling them in packs of three, um, delivery free in the local area, CW10, CW11, CW12. You can collect from the brewery on a Saturday. Um, if you've pre-ordered, we'll have it ready for you. Um, or we're doing mail order as well. Um, it's looking like about eight quid delivery. Um, so we can, um, we can get, get, um, get Murgy posted to your door. Um, and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks, guys. See you next time.